In this video, I'll take you step by step through creating your own custom data burn-in blueprints. We'll customize it to display exactly the information that you want, like camera settings, timecode, scene number, level, focal length and aperture, all presented in a clean and organized way. I'll also show you how to use the user job comment feature. Think of it like a custom message you can embed directly into the render itself. Perfect for adding C notes, version numbers, anything to keep everyone on the same page and avoid confusion down the line. You'll be empowering your editors with clear information and saving everyone a ton of time. So let's have a look! So first off, I'm going to uh, show you how a few things are set up before we dive into the uh, data burn-in blueprint. So here is a scene I've created with a skeletal mesh, uh, Camilla, then a small monologue I wrote, and the audio is created using AI. Look, I'm telling you, I don't know what happened to Michael. I saw him the other day, but after that, I don't know where he went, honestly. This animation is placed in a level sequence where we have the skeletal mesh with its animation and an audio track. In my cameras folder, I have uh, three different uh, level sequences with uh, one camera referenced in each sequence. Uh, I also have a nested subsequence for the animation track with Camilla and her animation. Then finally, I have my edit, which has a shot track where I've added my camera tracks. So I can use this information in the data burning uh, later to see which camera is actively playing. So with all that out of the way, let's jump into blueprints and start creating our own custom data burning. So you can of course start from scratch uh, by creating your own custom widget. We aren't going to do that, however, we're going to jump ahead in time by using the default one and then customize it instead to our needs. So select all in the content browser and type in burn in. Here you will find a few different assets called uh, default burning. However, it's this one that we need, the one with the small strips. So simply select this one and then uh, copy it by hitting Control C. Paste it wherever you want. I'm going to place it here in the uh, root folder. Now we want to start by renaming it. So I would suggest that you start with widget blueprint underscore whatever you want. And double click it to go into the blueprint editor. First off, we have two different views. We have the designer view up here to the right. And then we also have the graph view. We'll be working in both of them and we'll start with the designer one. All right, so let's start by changing the font. So I'm going to change this here under font, font family, to Roboto instead, or Roboto. You can also uh, upload your own fonts uh, by using the content drawer, if you have a font that you prefer to work with. You can of course shift select to select multiple at the same time. On this one, this is a, a custom user job comment. It's under here, text style, and then font, font family. Droid Sans Mono. I'm going to change this ro to robot. Now also, I think this one is a bit too close to the bottom. So I'm going to add some padding. So we'll toggle down padding. You can see that under bottom it's two pixels. I'm going to change this to four instead. All right, then you can of course also change the size. I'm going to use 14 for now. Now let's start customizing the widget blueprint. In the top center here, we actually have a small text block that you can type in. Uh, however, it's empty as of right now. So let's select it to the left here, where you can see top center. And then under uh, the text, text, let's type in the name of our project. So I'm going to type in Titke Burn In. We also need to change the font of this one to Roboto. 14 for the value. Also worth noting is that you can of course change the color if you want to have something else. All right, let's start moving things around and adding our own information as well as subtracting information that we perhaps don't need in our project. So let's start in the top right corner. If we select the top right one here, 
We can see that it says branch dev editor. And this will display the engine version of Unreal. Personally, I'm not going to use this information. So I'm going to replace this and type in camera timecode. And then let's jump into the graph. Here you can see everything that's going on to get the information, uh, which is then displayed in that uh, comment box. We're not going to use this information. Instead, we're going to disconnect this one. So instead, we're going to have this one go into a set text. Let's select this one and copy it and then paste it. Then we're going to get uh, top right. Get top right. And what text do we want this to show? We want to have it show a get cur current segment name. And this will show you the camera sequence. So select the outer name into the in text like this. Then compile and save. Right. Let's jump back into the designer. This is only a placeholder text. So uh, let's not get confused. And re let's replace this text by typing in camera here. So we know that this will show you which camera it is. Here you can see the result of what we just did. So you can see that we have our custom name up here and we also have our cameras up here. And perhaps you can see that there's a number after the cameras. So if we zoom in, zoom in here, because it's uh, quite small, we can see that uh, this number represents how many times this camera has been active in the main sequence. So you can see that this is the first time camera two is active and then it will cut away. And then camera two is active once again and it adds a number to show you how many times the camera has been active. Next up, let's tackle this issue here that we have our focal length. You will also have a similar issue with the uh, focus distance. And perhaps you want this, but if you're like me, you don't want this, then we'll uh, simply remove this number and round these values up to a more even number. Let's jump back into the graph view and then go to update bottom center. So for our blueprint, we don't want the focus distance, so select this one, then simply delete it. We will also erase this text here, focus distance, from the format text. But we're going to tweak the focal length. So after get focal length, we're going to round this number up. Then from the return value into the focal length. So now instead of having a 51.265 millimeter lens, we will have a 51 millimeter lens instead. If we have a look at the results once again, you can now see that we have even numbers. Down to the right, we only want to show the camera timecode. We're going to change the placeholder text to camera timecode. Let's jump into the graph and find the update bottom right. Here you can see that we once again have the get current segment name, which is the camera. And as we're already using this one, we can just delete this one. So here, we're just simply going to delete this text, shot name. And we're also going to delete shot and type in instead camera timecode or TC for short. Great, so now we have the result. So over to the left, we see the master timecode for the entire uh, sequence. T to the right, we can see the timecode for just the camera. So if we offset the camera in the sequencer, you can see that it still keeps the uh, correct time code for that camera. So that's very valuable for an editor to know. For the bottom left one, we're not going to change that much. Rename it to main time code. Let's jump into the graph view. Let's see, update bottom left. So we want to change master to main time, time code instead. And that's all we're going to change for the bottom left one. Finally, for the top left one, we have a bunch of information that I find invaluable. So we're going to delete most of it and only display the scene and the level. Here we have the graph for the top left one. First, we're going to delete the time and the date. So I'm going to disconnect the time and the date. 
I'm also going to erase it from this field here. Instead of world, I'm going to rename it to which scene it is. And instead of job, I'm going to replace this text to which sequence this is. So we have sequence, sequence name, scene, world name. We're also going to delete offer name. Compile and then save. As you've probably noted a few times now, the uh, font is way too small when you're rendering in 4K. So I'm going to select all my text once again and then change the size to something larger like 24. So after our tweaks here, this is our result. We have a much more clean data burning with rounded numbers and a custom name for our project up here. And then we can of course tweak it even further by adding more information if you want. I'm going to show you one more helpful information tidbit. That is the user job comment. So perhaps you're going to render this, but you aren't going to use physics yet because you haven't worked on the physics for the dress or the hair for example. So let's add that information to our editor, whoever is going to view this uh, render. So, so you can show them that this is just a work in progress. Here you can customize how the user job comment looks like. So since we changed the font size for this one, for the other ones, I'm going to do the same for this one. So I'm going to increase the size to 24 instead. Let's jump into Movie Render Cube and start doing some rendering. I've already added my preferred render settings here. So I'm going to render an Apple ProRes and then do some anti-aliasing, etc. When you're done with adding your own custom settings, you want to add a burn-in. Here, it's going to ask you which data burn-in widget blueprint you want to use. So we're going to use the one we just created. Just before you hit render, select the uh, sequence. And here you can see that you have comment. So if we type in something here, so for example, the example I mentioned uh, earlier, proper simulation. First, for example, you can type in whatever you want here. Then let's render this. You can see our custom comment here. You can also see that I misspelled must, but uh, yeah, you get the point. I hope you found the information in this video helpful, and perhaps you did uh, yours or your editor's life just a bit easier. You can of course add more information if you want. If you don't feel like following this tutorial or you just want a very quick set file for the data burning, I will leave a link down below where you can download my custom template from my Gumroad page, totally for free of course, to get you started more quickly. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more content like this on my channel. And uh, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.